Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna review this HDMI USB 2.0 video capture card. And the reason I was looking for it was so that I could go ahead and record video on my Nintendo Switch. So I'll show you what that looks like here shortly. But before I jump into that, uh, let me go ahead and talk to you a little bit about some of the specifications. So the input max resolution on this thing is 4K. However, the output max resolution is 1080p. So it will do 8, 10, and 12-bit color. And the specs say with a 26-gauge HDMI standard cable, it'll, it'll, you can use a cable up to 15 meters. I think my cable was about 2 meters, and it worked fine. Uh, again, it'll work with most any common capture software um, on Windows. I don't know about Mac. I don't have a Mac, but uh, I used OBS. And I'll show you my settings that I used in OBS here shortly. And again, this thing is USB 2.0. Interestingly enough, there is uh, a USB 3.0 model out there, but somebody on YouTube bought them, um, opened them up, and his conclusion was it was actually the same thing inside the USB 3.0 model, just being sold for more money. So I've got the USB 2.0 version of this HDMI video capture card. It works great. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when you open the OBS software is look down in the bottom right there, you can see the settings button right above the uh, exit button. So go ahead and click the settings buttons because that's where we wanna go in and configure OBS to make sure you could stream and record properly. Okay, from here, if you're gonna stream, go over to the left menu, click on stream, and you can see this is where you can configure your streaming account if that's Twitch or whatever. I actually don't intend to stream, but that's where you go to log into your streaming account. Okay, now that you're done setting up your stream account, go ahead and in the left menu bar, click on the output tab. And when you bring up that tab, the very first thing you wanna do is go to the top and see the, you'll see something called simple. Go ahead and click that and then click into advanced. Uh, that'll really expand all the choices that you have. Go to your first tab, the streaming tab, and this is where you're gonna configure how OBS, um, how OBS uh, captures and then renders your video out for streaming. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you got an audio track checked. Now, if you have a video, um, if you have a really good video capture card, especially NVIDIA card or something like that, go ahead and click that NVIDIA um, H264 new because that'll let it do hardware encoding. If you do just software H264, that'll probably chew up some bandwidth. You might get some lag, but I have a really high-end PC, so I'm able to use the NVIDIA, the NVIDIA hardware encoding. From there, go down to rate control and uh, use constant bit rate. And again, depending on the speed of your PC or the, the, the power of your PC and how well you want the stream to look, you can dial in your, your um, bit rate. And uh, I think the default is around 4,000 kilobits. The keyframe interval, go ahead and leave that at two. And this is where you can also play around with the presets. Um, uh, when I record, I'll show you that in a second. I put it on high but um, or, or quality or something like that. But maybe if you want to stream, you can do some low latency performance. And then put the profile on high. Go ahead and click the look ahead and the, um, and the psycho visual tuning. Leave the GPU at zero and put the max B frames to one. And that should be good for streaming. Okay, for setting it up for recording, click on over to the recording tab. Now these were the settings I used to record the video I'm about to show you on my Nintendo Switch. So again, um, the type is standard. You've got to give it a location for where your videos are, um, you know, where, where it wants to go ahead and store the videos once it's done rendering. I use MP4. Um, the reason I use MP4 is it's just, it's just a format that I like and it's easier to to render out. Now notice one thing, it will give you a notice that if for some reason, if your PC is glitchy and you you um, you crash or something like that, because you're doing MP4, you'll have to start the entire recording over. And it tells you that in that warning right there. So I use MP4. Again, I picked one audio track. And again, I've got the NVIDIA video card in here. So I picked that. And then constant bit rate, I played around with this quite a bit to really get the bit rate that I liked. And I settled down on 10,000 kilobits uh, on the bit rate. Keyframes two, um, max, um, oh, and the preset is max quality, profile high, um, look ahead checked, and the psycho visual tuning checked. 
GPU zero and the max B frames two. Now, why did I pick some of these settings? The reason is if I'm going to post these on YouTube, I actually looked up what YouTube likes in terms of encoded video, and these were the values, um, well, some of these values, the ones that, that, that YouTube can specify were the ones that YouTube was looking for. So that's why I picked these values, and you'll see in the video that, that I have, it's gonna look great. Okay, now we move down to the video tab in the menu on the left and bring up the video tab menu. Base canvas resolution, um, I was gonna post this at YouTube and the switch only does 1080p on HDMI, so I picked 1080p and the output um, scale resolution is 1080p, so there is no scaling that'll happen. You know, there was a lot of um, debate on YouTube about what downscale filter to use. Um, I picked bilinear and, and then of course 60 frames per second. I, look, I'm not a, a video render expert. I'm not even sure if that bilinear is actually being used because I don't think I'm doing any downscaling. So it's straight in. My source is 1080p and my output's 1080p. So I don't even know if that actually does anything. Finally, on the advanced tab at the very bottom left, bring it up. The only thing I really changed on here is that process priority. I went and put it on high because I really wasn't playing any high-end games, so I didn't, re well, I'm not playing anything on my PC, that's one thing. Everything is really just coming from the Switch through the video capture card, so I put the priority as, the process priority as high because I want as much CPU power going in to go ahead and doing the capture and the rendering the way I set it up in the record, in the record section. So with that said, these are all my settings, guys, so let's take a look at what this video looks like.
Okay, so that's it guys. This is the USB 2.0 HDMI video capture card that I got from eBay for, I paid 15 bucks. It looks like you can get it for $11. Look, for, I think it's it's worth it. You know, I've hooked it up to my Switch. I can, I, I recorded a video, I don't stream, but clearly with software like OBS, which by the way, if you don't know, open broadcast software, I think is what OBS stands for. That's open source and it's free, it's free to use. So for 11 bucks and some free software, you can start recording video from your Switch, and see what it looks like. So guys, thanks for watching the video. And again, this channel is always a little bit about, mostly it's about travel, food, photography, and I'm doing a little bit of tech reviews on the side and things like that. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for when I get new videos. And of course, go ahead and hit the like button as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching.